guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Tori and I typically upload videos three times a week about houseplants and healthy non-toxic living. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I wanted to go over my journey as an army or military wife. So I thought I would tell you guys a little bit about my own story and then give you guys some tips that I feel like would have helped me at the beginning of my journey being a military wife. So first I'll just kind of explain my story to you guys a little bit. So I actually live in Canada, so a lot of the things about the Canadian military are very similar to the US, but there are definitely some differences. My husband joined the army when he was 18. It was actually seven days after his 18th birthday when he left for basic training. And I was also 18 at the time. I left the same week to start university. And we actually did the next five years long distance. So when he started basic training, we had been together for a year. So we dated our last year of high school. We didn't actually go to the same high school, but we dated during our grade 12 year. Um, and then we both basically went to different sides of the country to do our own thing. And we actually waited five more years after that to get married. So I feel like that's where our story is so different than so many American military wives because I feel like so many of them get married super young. Um, that just isn't what we felt like was right for us. So basically we spent the next couple years um, apart. We saw each other a couple times a year usually. And then we got married almost three years ago, June 2016, and he is still in the army. He's been in for about seven and a half years at this point, I think. We've lived in the same place since we got married, but he has been gone a lot during that time. He left for his first and only deployment about nine months after we got married. And then ever since then, he's been like home. He's actually gone right now for two months for training. So that's kind of been our story for the past like eight and a half years that we've been together. I would say the absolute hardest times for us in terms of military were the first six months were so brutal. I was in school, he was in basic training, I basically never talked to him. Because that was so long ago, I didn't even have like full free calling on my phone. I had like limited minutes. And I actually had a landline at the time where I had like unlimited calls, but then he would call my landline and I would miss it because I'd be in class. And I just remember like crying all the time during that stage of life. It was so, so hard and it was just such a big change for us. And then obviously his deployment was also very challenging, definitely in different ways. We were much more used to the lifestyle at that point, but we were married and it was obviously hard for me to be here by myself without him. So I wanted to share eight tips and these are just tips that I feel like would have helped me at the time. I really had no idea what I was going into. I did not grow up in a military family. I didn't have any friends in the military. I just, I didn't know the lifestyle at all. So I really hope that these tips will help someone out there who's maybe a new military wife or a new army wife, or even if you are just dating someone in the military, I think that these could also be helpful. So the first tip is communication. And I know that you hear this from everyone. And I thought that this was so cliche before we got married. I really didn't understand it. I feel like our communication when we were dating was actually pretty good because we were long distance. We like talk to each other on the phone every day. And when you never see each other and you can only talk on the phone I think you're forced to have really good communication but I definitely believe that poor communication in marriages is why so so many marriages are failing neither Quinden nor I love talking on the phone like we neither of us are super chatty people so we just don't have a lot to say on the phone which I know sounds funny I feel like people are always like it's your husband like you should want to talk to them all day long but neither of us are chatty so sometimes it's been a struggle for us to talk on the phone for 30 minutes because neither of us really felt like we had anything important to say my life here isn't always that exciting it's pretty much the same a lot of days and then same with him when he's gone it's very very repetitive so sometimes we just kind of find that we're like so like what else did you do today and there's just not a lot so so personally we've had to put a lot of effort into making the quality of our conversations good we want them to be fun and meaningful and we want to finish off those conversations feeling almost feeling like we just went on a date instead of having this like forced conversation and then as far as communication you need to be super honest about just the struggles and the things that are going on. Military lifestyle just brings so many additional things onto the table and you need to be so open about talking about that. And this goes for when your husband or boyfriend or whatever is home also, even when they're not away, you need to be so clear with your communication. My second tip is community. And I think this is true whether you are a military spouse or not, you need a community of people around you who are like-minded and who can really support you in times of struggle or if anything comes up. Especially when you're living somewhere where your family isn't 
You honestly just need someone who, if your car was to break down on the side of the road, you could call and they would be there for you. Or if you're having a really bad night and you just really need to talk to someone, you need friends like that that are almost like family. So personally, my really close friends don't come from the military community. I know some people love like the military community. Like I said um, at the beginning, most people here don't get married super young. So we were 22 when we got married and literally zero of Quinton's friends were married or even in serious relationships. Um, we're 25 now and still most of them aren't married and most of them are older so there just really wasn't any other military wives most of the ones that there were are like 45 and have a couple kids and just not in the same life stage as I am so personally most of my friends came from our church community but it doesn't matter where those friends come from it's just really important that you have a community of people and even if you are an introvert or if you're really shy you love spending time alone you just need those people and it doesn't have to be like a thousand friends you just maybe need at least two or three good friends that you can really count on my third tip is to pursue your own dreams and passions and I think this is really what has clicked with me even in the past year or so and this is different than staying busy I hate the advice like just stay busy it'll go faster because I actually don't think that's true I think busyness can be really empty and really lonely sometimes if you're just doing things for the sake of passing time I actually find that harder often than just being home because if I keep myself busy and I go hang out with friends and it's only for the sake of keeping busy I often find myself places just wishing that Quinton was there instead of really enjoying myself but if I'm doing things that I truly love and I'm super passionate about, that's when the time passes and I don't think about being sad or being lonely. And this can be different for everybody. For some people, you might have a job that you absolutely love going to. Other people might not love their job or you might not have a job. So it's just important to have hobbies or just something that you enjoy doing that really just brings joy to your life. For me, this has really just been pursuing this like side business of YouTube and Instagram and everything. I am just so passionate about that. I love the creative aspect of it and it really just gives me an outlet and something that I truly enjoy doing. My fourth tip, and this is probably the hardest one for me to learn, is to not have expectations. Honestly, expectations in the military almost always lead to disappointment. The military runs on their own schedule with their own rules. They just kind of do what they want. And if you are always bogged down by like, that's not fair or that's not how it should be or we had plans, you're just gonna be disappointed over and over and over again. I remember the very beginning of Quinton's military career. We had been apart for four months. It was the first time we had ever been apart. He was at basic training and then at the rest of his like trade training. We didn't see each other in between those. So we had been apart for four months. We basically hadn't talked that whole time. And he had a to come visit me and it was probably two or three days before the trip was supposed to happen the military was like nope you don't have this time off and he wasn't allowed to come and I honestly remember just crying for like days and days and days I was literally heartbroken it was so sad I was so disappointed and I would like to say that I learned my lesson after one time I did not that same thing happened a couple other times maybe not quite so dramatic but there was definitely other times where we had plans or we were hoping to make plans or we thought something was gonna go one way and then it changed and I was just crushed so now I just don't get excited about military plans if they say something like oh you have these days off or you might have these days off I don't really believe anything until it happens which is kind of sad it makes it makes me feel really jaded sometimes but honestly I just have to do that in order to protect my heart and I feel like I've just been in a much healthier place since I've had that perspective basically dates and plans and everything with the military don't really mean anything and the earlier you can learn that the less disappointed you'll have to be my fifth tip is to make the most of wherever you live there's a good chance that with the military you will live in several different cities or different states or provinces or maybe even different countries and I just really encourage you to make the most of those places it's not a secret that I don't love where we live right now um, but the reality is that we won't live here forever and I really want to take advantage of all the different like weekend trips and little getaways and stuff like that that we can do here even just things in our own city I really don't want to move away and then years later be like oh I wish we did that when we lived in Edmonton or I wish we did that when we lived there so I'm really trying to appreciate what this city does have to offer while we're here. And then also make the most of the time that you do have together. Obviously Quinton is gone a lot. I think this has kind of come naturally to me because he's been gone so much when he's home. I appreciate it 100%. I really, really do not take those moments for granted. 
um, but I think that's so important. I've always been intentional even with jobs to not have a job that's going to take me away from him a lot. Like I don't want to work evenings or weekends when he is home. When he's away, I definitely work more. I will be working on YouTube videos or something super late in the evening, but when he's home, I really try to spend that time with him. So yeah, just really be grateful for any time that you do have together and just make the most of it. Go on lots of dates and just try to spend lots of time together. My seventh tip is to get a dog or a pet, and obviously this isn't something that everyone can do, but we just got a dog about six months ago, and it has been so amazing to have like a companion here when Quinton is gone. There are definitely aspects of having a dog that are more work when he's away because all of the responsibility goes on me, especially because he's still a puppy, and he just requires a lot of attention and everything, but it is so worth it to have a companion here. It makes me so much less lonely, and it's just amazing. And then my last tip is kind of cheesy but just remember that it's all worth it. I constantly just remind myself that I would choose this life with all of its struggles over and over again because it means that I get to be with Quinton. Uh, I would choose that over being with someone else or just not living this life any day because it's absolutely 100% worth it. And I really just try to be grateful for the things that the military has brought into my life, the friendships and the opportunities that I have because of it. So I hope that those tips were helpful for you. Like I mentioned, those are just things that I wish that maybe I had learned earlier in my time being an army wife. Um, but at the same time, I know that I kind of had to learn some of those lessons the hard way. But I hope that those will help someone who is maybe at the beginning of that journey of being a military wife. Please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you feel like you don't have support and you need someone to talk to about things that you're going through. It's definitely hard and it's nice to have someone who has gone through something similar and really understands it. So thank you guys so much for watching that and I will see you in my next video.